continue forward teaching our people who are the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans who they are according to the Bible, all right? Give me John chapter 8, verse 32, all right? You blacks and Hispanics, you are the children of Israel. You are the lost, the 12 tribes of the children of, of the nation of Israel, according to the Bible, all right? You are not black, you are not Hispanic. Today you will learn the truth about your nationality. Today you are going to learn the truth about who you are, according to the Bible, all right? Your pastors are not teaching you this in the churches, all right? They are just putting you to sleep, taking the money out of your pocket and lying to you. Give me that. John chapter 8 and verse 32. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Read it again. And ye shall know the truth. And ye, ye so-called blacks and Hispanics, shall know what? The truth. The truth. And what is the truth supposed to do to you? And the truth shall make you free. The truth is supposed to make you free. All right? Free from what? Free from bondage. Free from ignorance. All right? Because that's what you so-called blacks and Hispanics are. You are ignorant to the fact of who you are according to the Bible. All right? You, are been, you have been lied to. You take what the white man tells you as truth, all right? He told you you're Hispanic, and you run with that. He told you you're Puerto Rican, and you run with that. He told you you're black, you run with that. He told you you're African American, you run with that. But to find out for yourself, you don't do it. Give me Isaiah chapter 34, verse 16, all right? You're going to learn the truth, all right? Stick around, you are going to learn the truth. Isaiah chapter 34 and verse 16. Seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. The Bible says, seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. All right? It doesn't say take man's word for it. It doesn't say watch TV and learn who you are. It says what? Seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. It says seek ye out of the book of the Lord, out of the book of God and read. Read it for yourself, all right? Don't take man's word for it. Read it for yourself. None of these, none, no one of these shall fail. No one of these shall fail. No one of the prophecies that is found in the Bible shall fail. Why? Because it's true. It happens, all right? The prophecies of the Bible are true. They happen to you so-called blacks and Hispanics, and we're going to read that. None shall want her mate. None shall want her mate, meaning you can't put another book next to the Bible. The book of the dead, all right, which is Egyptology. All Egyptology is, is the study of Egypt. It is a white man's curriculum, all right, to teach, to learn the secrets of Egypt, all right? The writings of Egypt. But what does God say? Read that again from the top. Seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. It says, seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. And read. All right, study for yourself. No one of these shall fail. No one of these prophecies shall fail. None shall want her mate. None shall want her mate. Meaning when you read this Bible, you ain't going to want to read, you ain't going to want to learn about, about the Jehovah Witness comic books. You're not going to want to learn about Egyptology. You're not going to want to make any other books with the Bible. Why? Because the Bible is the only book on the face of this earth that tells you blacks and Hispanics what was going to happen to you. How you ended up in this condition. All right? Give me Proverbs 1 and 20. Proverbs chapter 1 and verse 20. Wisdom cries without. She uttereth her voice in the streets. Wisdom, the wisdom of God. The wisdom in us found in this Bible cries without. That is what you hear coming out of my voice. The wisdom of God. Why? Because I'm reading from the Bible. We are reading from the Bible. All right? Yo, wake up, man. That's what we're talking about. Our people are destroyed. Give me that. Our people are destroyed. Jose. You don't agree with it? Why? Why you don't agree with it? This is why we coming out. Give me Isaiah 58. That's good that you're listening. But you know what? As you're listening, you're falling asleep. Why? Because you're high, bro. You're high. All right? You're medicated. What kind of medication? Huh? All that 
Depakol. Okay, Depakol. All that's yeah. doing is numbing your brain. Yeah. All right, it's numbing you, bro. Right. You bro, you falling asleep. It's like dope. Yeah. It's like heroin. Yeah. It's the same thing. No, it's not. Yes, it is. Give me that. Yo, don't go nowhere. You don't want to hear the truth. That's what it is. You want to stay high on drugs. That's what you want to do. Give me that. Give me that. Read, bro. Read. Stop lying to the people. Don't listen to them. The Bible says, cry out loud. We had a drug addict standing in front of us, going to sleep, and I'm raising my voice so that he can stay awake. But the drugs that he's on is putting him to sleep. That's right. All right? He doesn't want to hear the truth. Why? Because he wants to stay medicated. He wants to be heavily sedated on drugs. The drugs is keeping him from this truth. Read. Cry aloud. Spare it not. Spare it not. I don't care about his feelings. I don't care what he has to say about his medication. All right, the Bible says, spare not. Read. Lift up thy voice like a trumpet. Lift up thy voice like a trumpet. Why? So that the people can hear the people across the street and the people in front of me falling asleep on drugs can hear. All right, that's why I said, wake up. It is high time to awake out of sleep. Okay, read. And show down. my people their transgression. And show my people their transgression, meaning their sins. That's why the prophets of the Most High are standing before you today, all right? To show our people their transgressions, their sins. And the house of Jacob, their sins. And the house of Jacob, meaning Israel, their sins. Give me Romans 13, verse 11. Which version is that? All right? He was falling asleep on his feet right here. He doesn't know that them drugs are not helping him. All they're doing is making him a drug addict, meaning addicted to that drug. He was a heroin addict, and now he's addicted to what? What he said? Uh, Dopamine? De Depromil. Depromil, which is another sedative to keep you asleep. Read. Romans chapter 13 and 11. And that knowing the time, that And now, that knowing the time. You have to know the time, black man, Hispanic man. Read. That now it is high time to awake out of sleep. And now it is high time to awake out of sleep. Are you awake if you're nodding off high on drugs? No. Are you awake if you're calling yourself African American? No. Are you awake if you're calling yourself Jamaican, Rastafarian? No. Are you awake if you call yourself Puerto Rican? No. You are asleep to the truth of who you are according to the Bible. It is high time to awake out of sleep. You blacks and Hispanics need to awake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than when we believe. Now is our salvation nearer than when we believe. Why? Because the last days, the prophets are waking up and we're raising our voice. We're teaching our people who they are. That's right. Okay. Now is our salvation nearer. Why? Because the truth is, is springing up out of the earth. All right. You had a question, bro? What verse is that? That's Romans chapter. Verse. What version? That's the King James Version. All right? That's the Bible. That's the Holy Bible that was given to the Israelites. Give me Psalms 147, verse 19. All right? Because the Bible was not given to everyone. All right? The Bible was only given to you so-called blacks and Hispanics. All right? And Native Americans. Read, bro, read. Psalms chapter 147. Psalms chapter 147, verse 19. He showeth his word unto Jacob. He showeth his word, meaning this Bible, unto Jacob. Jacob's name was changed to Israel. All right? We are the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. The blacks and Hispanics make up the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. He shows his word, meaning the Bible. Read. His statutes and his judgments unto Israel. His statutes, meaning his laws and his judgments, meaning what would happen if you break God's laws, his judgments. He has not dealt so with any nation. He has not dealt so with any nation. So that right there is letting you know that the Bible was only given to Israel, the house of Jacob, all right? And you said, how do you know that it's a true version, right? That's what you said? That was your question? No. What was your question? I said it's only a translation. It is a translation, right? It's only a translation. What do you mean by that? Exactly. Now, if I speak to you in the original tongue, are you going to understand me? No. Why? I don't know. 
because you don't know it. What do you speak? What do you speak? What do you speak? What's the language that you speak, brother? What are you speaking now? English, right? Because you understand English. Give me Isaiah 28, verse 11. Isaiah chapter 28 and verse 11. For with stammering lips and another tongue. For with stammering lips and another what? And another tongue. And another tongue, meaning another language. Will he speak to this people? Will he speak to the Israelites? Why? Because our language was taken away from us. That's why the, the Most High God saw fit that the Bible be translated. This Bible right here is the number one most translated book in the face of the earth. Why? Okay, so what is your point? Speak up, raise up your voice so I can hear you. Excuse me. You can tell me which passage that tells me how to pray and meditate. Oh, you want to know how to pray and meditate. Excellent. Give me um First Kings 8, but before that, give me um, First Corinthians 11. About the, um, the covering of the head. First Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 4. Every man praying or prophesying. So you wanted to know how to pray and meditate, right? Read. Every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonoreth his head. Any man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonoreth his head. That means when you read in this Bible, you have to uncover your head. That's, what, that's why you see us with our head uncovered. And when you pray, you have to have your head uncovered. Okay? That's the law. That's a law that's in the Bible. All right? So now you're learning how to pray. But every woman that prays or prophesies with her head uncovered dishonors her head. You see that? So the woman has to cover her head when she prays or when she's reading this Bible, meaning prophesying. Because when you're reading the words of God, you're actually prophesying. That's what we're doing. We're prophesying. We're speaking the words of the Most High. All right, so are you getting the understanding of how to how to pray and meditate? No. You're not getting it? Why not? No. What did you not understand from that passage? How to pray and meditate. Okay, we're showing you the beginning steps of how to pray. The first thing you have to do when you pray is uncover your head. Did you understand that? I get that part. Okay, excellent. Now give me 1 Kings. 1 Kings chapter 8 and verse 46. If they sin against thee, for there is no man that sinneth not. So this is this is um, King Solomon was speaking, right? And he's talking about the Israelites, all right? If they sin against thee, meaning the Israelites, because in order to sin, you have to know the law. You, you have to be breaking in law to sin, all right? You understand that? Okay. So if they sin against thee, meaning if they break God's law, the Israelites, who was given the Bible, who was given God's law, read. And thou be angry with them. And God be angry with us, the Israelites, for breaking his laws. And deliver them to the enemy. And deliver them, the Israelites, to the enemy. That's how you end up, ended up here in America. That's how you ended up in Jamaica, in South America, in Central America. Scattered throughout the four corners of the earth. For what? For breaking God's laws. Read. So that they carry them away captives. You see that? We were carried away captives. Who did that happen to? I'm asking you a question, brother. It's not a trick question. It's not a trick question. When you say, a lot of us are carried away captive. And why? Who? Africans for one. So called Africans were carried away captive. Those people that you call Africans are not Africans. They are the, the, the children of Israel, the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. We ended up in Africa, but just like you're here in America, you're not really American, all right? You, you don't descend from Americo Vespucci, all right? You don't descend from Leo Scipio Africanus, and you don't come from the people from Africa. You descend, if, if you're from the slave trade, you are from the children of Israel, all right? Read. Yet, if they shall bethink themselves. Yet, if they shall bethink themselves. Do you understand what bethink means? Brother, bethink means to remember, remember who you are. Yet if they shall bethink themselves in the land 
whether they were carried captives. So us, we bethink ourselves. We remember who we are in the land where we were carried captives. All right? Read. And repent. And repent, meaning turn back from your sins. Turn back from your wicked ways. All right? Read. And make supplication unto thee. And, and make supplication. Another word for supplication is to pray. All right? Supplication means to pray. Read. Unto thee in the land of them that carried them captive, saying. So praying unto the Most High in the land where we were carried captives. Read. Saying, we have sinned and we have done perversely. So when you pray, brother, because you wanted to learn how to pray, right? When you make supplication to the Most High, you are supposed to confess your sins. What does it say again after we, supplication? Unto thee in the land of them that carried them captives, saying, we have sinned and we have done perversely. So when you pray, brother, you're supposed to uncover your head and pray to the Most High and say, what? We have sinned and have done perversely. You are supposed to confess your sins to the Most High. You're supposed to acknowledge your sins to the Most High. Know where you went wrong and confess it to the Most High. But can you confess your sins if you don't know what sins you're guilty of? No, you cannot. Read. And we have committed wickedness. And so return unto thee with all their heart and with all their soul in the land of their enemies. Return to the Most High. You can't physically return to the Most High. Why? Because the Most High is up in the, in, in the heaven. And we're here on earth. You can't return physically. So what is that talking about? Your heart It's talking about your mind. All right? Return to the Most High with your mind. How? By praying and meditating on these scriptures. Okay? So did I answer your question, brother? All right, continue. Let me ask, let, let, me, let, me, let him answer my question. Did I answer your question about how to pray and meditate? No. no? You didn't learn how to pray and meditate? You said what to pray, not to pray. All right, continue. You said what to pray. All Which right. Which led them and away captive. I didn't ask what to pray. I asked. All right, continue. And pray unto thee toward the land which thou gavest unto their fathers. You see that? Read that again. Listen, brother. And pray unto thee toward their land. How do you pray? Read it again. And pray unto thee toward their land. And pray unto thee, unto the Most High, toward their land. Which is the land? Jerusalem, all right? Africa is not our homeland. Jerusalem is our homeland. So when you pray, brother, you wanted to know how to pray? I'm showing you how to pray. You're supposed to pray toward your land, confessing your sins. With your hat on. With your hat, with your head uncovered. Give me a... Um, let me ask you a question. Do you want to know how the Most High listens to your prayers? Do you want to know that? Do you want to know why? Because a lot of our people ask, I pray, but God don't listen to my prayers. Is that one? Is that something alone that you're curious about, brother? Well, you know, listening is not my problem. I'm sure it's not my problem. I know that it is more than an answer. So you know that what? No, it's an answer. Okay. What I ask, what I ask, uh, oh, not what you mean, what you say? Oh, okay, well, how is a lot of things? How is the brother brought out a beautiful scriptures oh, oh, on how to physically do it? Do you pray and physically? Say uh, that we do pray. Right, but and now. Say, say what to pray, we don't say oh, Well, the way you pray means what? It means asking, it means to ask. So if you want me, me to give you something, you're going to ask me, right? Well, can I have that, right? So if that's what you're talking about, when you pray to the Most High, prayer is just another word for asking. You're asking the Lord for something. Okay, does that answer, does that answer your question? Is that, does that get any more? Are we getting more no, close? if you go here, I can ask you to that you pick up a good answer. Okay, now let me ask you this, okay? That's you, we can go back and forth on 150 yeah. different places. Yeah. But now if you hear though, humbly, to ask the question humbly, then we, the brother gave you the answers. And I'm, and I'm explaining it, elaborating a little more on so, But we all know that you can do I'm things to care for what you ask for. Okay? I don't know if it's simple And he gave you simple answers according to the Bible. Just like I gave you a simple answer. I said, if you're asking what to say, it's, remember, prayer is asking. Okay? Because a lot of people, I know I myself, before I found out about this truth, I didn't know how to pray. 
Follow what I'm saying? Because I would pray and I was like, damn, what do I say? There's certain things I got to say, whatever. The brother brought out great scriptures on it. Okay? Now, now give me give me Job, not, uh, Job uh, 28, I'm sorry, Proverbs uh, 28 and 9. Okay? Pro so the question you should be asking yourself is, okay, how do I ensure that the Most High listens to my prayers? Listen to the question. It's a whole different question, but it has a lot of meaning in that question. Proverbs chapter 28 and verse 9. He that turneth away his ear from hearing the law, even his prayer shall be abomination. Read it again. He that turneth away his ear from hearing the law, even his prayer shall be abomination. So what our people need to realize, the so-called blacks, Hispanics, uh, Jama uh, Jamaicans, Haitians, Native Americans, that this Bible is only for us, first and foremost. Okay? Number two. There's stipulations that the Most High God in this scripture alone has stated that in order for us to have our prayers answered, we need to go ahead and follow the laws, statutes, and commandments of the Most High God. Psalms 111 and 10. Here's the reason why. Okay? We need to understand that because, what, what's your name? Lloyd. Lloyd. I had the same problem. Okay? I didn't know if God was hearing my prayers. I wanted to know why he wasn't hearing all of my prayers. Okay? And it wasn't until I find out, like the brother brought out in 1 Kings 8, that first I had to repent and recognize that I'm an Israelite man. That's the first step according to 1 Kings 8, like the brother brought out. Okay, read. Psalms 111 and verse 10. Here's the reason why we got to follow the Lord's statute of commandments and then to process the Lord or hear our prayer. Let me get back to it. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. But how do you fear the Lord? A, a good understanding have all they that do his commandments. That say, talk about his commandments. That do his commandments. That do some of the commandments. That do his commandments. That do his commandments. His praise endureth forever. His praise endureth forever. So Lord, we have to do the commandments. So I'm kind of trying to get a feel for what your question is because I kind of had that same question. But physically, the brother brought out the great scriptures on that. We're supposed to head east, face east, put our hands up, okay, and, and, and ask for supplication. Okay, okay. All right, Lloyd, so do you understand now how to pray and meditate? No. You don't understand? You didn't understand? No. All right, what was the first thing I told you? I didn't tell you what to pray. I told you how to pray. I told you you have to uncover your head when you pray or prophesy, right? And then I went to 1 Kings 8, and I showed you that you no. have to confess your sins towards the Most High, and you have to face towards the East, towards the land. Toward our land, which is Jerusalem. Psalm chapter one and verse two. But I delight. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. Read that again. And in his law doth he meditate day and night. And in his law, meaning, where do you find God's laws, Lord? Where do you find God's laws? In your heart. You were born with God's laws in your heart? No, they were, no, they were not, all right? Yo, you, don't, you are confused. Your heart is, is talking about the mind. All right, so we're gonna break it down to you nice and slow. I'm gonna, I'm gonna break it down to you nice and slow. You said the heart, God's uh, laws is in your heart. Give me that Mark 7 verse 20. I'm gonna to explain to you through the Bible what is the heart. All right? What is God talking about when he says the heart? Because the heart is an organ that pumps blood through the body. The heart does not have, doesn't doesn't think. The heart does not have the power to discern, okay? Your mind does. Read. Mark chapter 7 and verse 21. For from within, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts. Read it again. For from within, so from within, for from within, out of the heart of men. Out of the heart of men. Now you may think that's talking about the heart. Let's see. Proceed evil thoughts. Proceed evil thoughts. What do you use to think? Is it your heart that you think with or your, or your brain that you think with? You think with your mind, your brain. All right, let's not get simple, brother. All right, your brain is what you use to think. That's the organ that the Most High gave you to think, to discern, all right? It's not your, your whole being, it is your mind, all right? 
So when go back to Proverbs where you were at. Psalm. Psalm chapter one and verse two. But I delight in his law. So but we delight in his law, all right? In the Bible where you find God's law. It's not found in our heart. All right. The only way it's found in our heart is when we when we read the Bible. Then it's in your mind. Other than that, you're ignorant to, to God, you're ignorant to your who you are according to the Bible. Read. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. Our delight is in the law of the Lord, meaning in the Bible. But, and, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. And in his law are we supposed to meditate day and night. So you wanted to know how to pray and how to meditate. Well, you're supposed to meditate by reading God's laws. This is what's supposed to be on your mind. Give me Deuteronomy chapter 6, and I think it's verse 4, all right? Let's see how we meditate on God's law, because you want to learn how to pray and how to meditate. I showed you how to pray, and now I'm going to show you how to meditate. Read. Deuteronomy chapter 6 and verse 7. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children. And thou shalt teach them diligently, meaning seriously, all right? Because it's a serious matter to teach them. Um, the children he's lost. Why? Because it keeps them from death. Because the wages of sin is death. All right? The wages of breaking God's law is death, meaning the payment. Read. And shall talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. All right? So you're supposed to meditate on these, on these, on the Bible, on these laws um, daily, all right? Because when, um, when you're constantly thinking about these laws, that's that, what's that? That's meditation. Your mind is on the Lord. You're meditating on the Lord, all right? So you, your mind is supposed to be on this, on, this, on this Bible, all right? So did I help you with your questions, Lloyd? No, right? Give me Proverbs 21, verse 16. This is why you don't understand the Bible, Lloyd. Right. All right? You, you said you didn't understand the understanding. All right, so let me help me to understand. I just showed you. We just brought you the scriptures. All right, now if you refuse to listen, that's another story. All right, Proverbs 21, verse 16. Proverbs chapter 21, and verse 16. The man this is the problem with the majority of our people. All right, read. The man that wandereth out of the way of understanding. The man that wandereth out of the way of understanding. The man that wandereth. The only understanding is in the Bible. That's where you find the understanding. When you wander from this Bible, when you start um, meditating on what you think, if you start giving your own opinion, if you start going with what you think um, is meditation, what you think is prayer. The man that wandereth out of the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead. The man that wandereth out of the Bible, out of the way of understanding, shall remain in the congregation of the dead. All right? A dead meaning dead state. How are you dead, Lord? Because you don't know who you are. Psalms 111 and 10 again. Psalms 111 and verse 10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Lord, you have to fear the Most High. That's how you get your wisdom. Read it again. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. That's how you bless it, Hispanics, who are the true Israelites according to the Bible. This is how you get your wisdom, by fearing the Most High. How, how do you fear the Most High? By keeping His laws, statutes, and commandments. All right, why? Because you are fearful of His judgments. Read. A good understanding have all they that do his commandments. A good understanding have all they that do his commandments. Lloyd, let me ask you a question. Do you read the Bible? When you read the Bible, is your head covered or uncovered? It's uncovered. Why? Why is it uncovered? I just read it to you. You weren't listening to me again. We're going to take it slow for you, Lloyd, because we want you to get the understanding. All right, when you leave here, we want you to understand how to pray and how to prophesy and how to meditate, all right? 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 4. Every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, 
dishonoreth his head. Now, why do you have to uncover your head when you're reading the Bible? Lloyd, talk to you. Why do you have to uncover your head when you're reading the Bible? Read it again for Lloyd. Lloyd. Lloyd, pay attention. Pay attention. Read. I grew up that way. I grew up that way. No. This is why, Lloyd. Read. Listen. Lloyd, look at me. This is why. Don't look down. Look at the brother. All right? Listen to what he's saying. This is the understanding of why you have to uncover your head. Every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonoreth his head. Now, I'm going to ask you the question again. Why do you uncover your head when you read the Bible? Read it again. This is the answer. Every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonoreth his head. Because when you read the Bible with your head covered, you're dishonoring your head. Who is the head? Read above. Be, fol be followers of me. Read above, verse 1. Start at verse 1. Be followers of me. Even as I even as I also am of Christ. So Paul is telling us to be followers of him, even as he is a follower of Christ. Now I praise you, brethren, that ye remember me in all things and keep the ordinances as I deliver them to you. Keep the laws as Paul delivered them to us, the Israelites. Read. But I will have you know that the head of every man is Christ. The head of every man is Christ. So when you prophesy when you read the Bible with your head covered you're dishonoring Christ that's what Paul is telling you you understand now why you have to uncover your head Lloyd okay excellent so why do you have to uncover your head Lloyd why do you have to uncover your head I'm asking you I want you I want to hear you say it. why you're dishonoring your head head is Christ. Excellent, Lord. Now you've got the understanding. So now you're learning how to pray. He's not prophesying, so he's going to have to pick up. All right? So now you understand when you read this Bible, when you're prophesying, when you're teaching this Bible like we are, you're supposed to uncover your head because you're dishonoring your head when you do that. All right, Lord? So this is how you learn how to pray. You understand that? I learned, I learned, I learned all this pray. And I don't know you meditate. I just want to ask you if you know where in the Bible it says how to pray and meditate. I just showed you. Okay, bro. Because. Oh, oh. All right. Just tell him what you want. All right, all right. Because the brother asked you earlier, did you come to actually learn how to pray? Or do you, or, or what were you actually asking? So now you're telling us that you knew how to pray and meditate, but now you want to prove us? I'm not, find proving, out. I'm not proving anything. I'm ju I just want to know for myself. Okay. All right. All right. If it's in the Bible that says all right. how to pray and meditate. All right. Oh, okay. Because okay. the Bible says it says to pray and meditate. All right, but you yes. didn't know exactly where. Now you know exactly where, right? All right. All right. Sorry, bro. So now I went to First Corinthians 11 to show you that you have to take off your hat when you're praying. That's one. That's one step to learning how to pray. I went to First First Kings 8. To show you that you have to pray by confessing your sins. That's how you pray. Facing the east, okay? Right. Making supplication to the most high. I'm showing you how to pray. Alright? You did not know this before you stood here. You had an understanding that was shown to you in the church or wherever you learned your understanding. Right. But to pull it out from the Bible, you did not know. Alright? I'm asking you and you don't know. But you still, it. brother, you don't know. You said it's in your heart. It's not in your heart, because you don't even know what the heart is according to the Bible. All right? Are you a body of spirit or a spirit of a body? Excuse me? Are you a body of spirit or a spirit of a body? Both. It's both. I have a body and I have a spirit. It's both. Are you a body with a spirit? Or are you a Romans spirit 7, verse 14. I'm done with you, Lloyd. You don't want to get the understanding? Keep it moving, all right? I already showed you how to pray and how to meditate. If you don't want to take heed, that's on you. I'm here to teach the people. Read. Romans chapter 7, verse 14. For we know that the law is spiritual. For we know that the law is spiritual. The law is spiritual, Lloyd. Read. But I am carnal, 
sold under sin. But I am carnal. We are carnal, sold under sin. Meaning without these laws, we will sin, Lord. We will shave our face, okay? We will cover our heads when we're praying. We are sold unto sin, all right? But the law is spiritual. The law is what makes us spiritual, Lord, all right? This is how you become spiritual. It is not, are you a spiritual body? Are you a body and a spirit? No, Lloyd, it's what the Bible says, okay? Read. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. But the Israelites are carnal, sold under sin. That's why God gave us the law. That's why you find in Psalms 147, verse 19 and 20, the Most High gave the laws to the house of Jacob. He has not done so with any other nation. Right. All right? Now give me Deuteronomy 28, verse 15. Because we're going to continue with the lesson teaching our people who they are. Brother, do you know who you are according to the Bible? Do you know your nationality? What is your nationality? You really don't know. So this is the perfect opportunity for you to learn. Deuteronomy 28, verse 15. Deuteronomy chapter 28, and verse 15. But it shall come to pass if thou wilt not Hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. So this is Moses who was talking to the Israelites in the wilderness, right? Read. To observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day. To observe and to do all his commandments. So we have to read this Bible. That's how you observe. By reading, studying, right? And to what? To observe to do all his commandments. To do all his commandments. Another word for commandments is laws, right? And his statutes, which I command thee this day. Which the Most High commanded us through Moses. All right? So let's um, give me verse 32. That all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. That all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. All right? Is cursing a good thing or a bad thing? Bad. Exactly. So now we're going to see some of the curses that fell on the children of Israel. Because Moses was talking to the Israelites, right? So let's see the curses that fell upon them. 32. Verse 32. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people. Now what does that sound like? Given away, away right? Yeah. What? Keep reading. And thine eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long. And thine eyes shall look and fail with longing, meaning you have no power to get your children back. They shall be given away, and you have no power to get them back. And there shall be no might in thine hand. And there shall be no power in thine hand, right? So what does that sound like? Lord, uh, what's your name, brother? Ernest. Ernest. What does that sound like if the children are given away? It sounds like slavery, right? Exactly. Shall be given away unto another people in slavery. All right, so this is how you get the understanding of who you are according to the Bible. Because if Moses was talking to the Israelites, right, and we know through history, in school they taught us, right, that the so-called blacks went into slavery here in America. We were given, our children were given unto another people in slavery here in America. So if Moses said that this, 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 these curses shall be for you for not following the commandments. So this is how you get the understanding of who you are. Because if he's talking to the Israelites, right, and this happened to the so-called blacks and Hispanics, and these curses shall follow us, like Moses said, who did these curses fall upon? So in other words, if you are living, in, uh, under, you are living according to the commandments, and that's when the curses, the curses fall upon you? The curses fall upon you, and they fell upon you, right? right okay. Because that's history. That happened to right, us. Right, right. So that's how you know who you are, okay. all right? Because it happened to us. Right. Give me on verse 30, 31, 40, 41. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 41. Thou shalt beget sons and daughters. Meaning you're going to have sons and daughters, right? But thou shalt not enjoy them. You shall not enjoy them. Why? For they shall go into captivity. For they shall go into captivity. That's how your sons were given unto another people. They went into captivity. Understanding now? So if this is the Israelites who Moses is talking to, who are we, according to the Bible? The blacks and Hispanics. We are the Israelites. Why? Because that curse only fits us. You understand? The white man that calls himself Jewish, that curse didn't fall on him. He never went into slavery. 
I'm going to bring out another verse that makes it even plainer, makes it even clearer of who we are. 68. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. And the Lord shall bring the Israelites into Egypt again. How many times did we go, the Israelites going to Egypt? Right. Once. Right. Once, right? Once it's a physical Egypt, meaning Moses delivered us out of Egypt, right? right. But this verse is telling us we're going to go into Egypt again. How? With ships. With ships. All right? To go into Egypt, we didn't, we didn't, you don't need a ship. Why? Because Israel and Egypt are connected. All right? There's no body of water that separates you. So you don't need a ship. So now we got to get the understanding of when it says Egypt, what does it mean? Exodus, Exodus chapter 20 and verse 2. I am the Lord thy God, which I brought thee out of the land of Egypt. The Most High God used Moses to bring us out of the land of Egypt, right? Out of the house of bondage. Out of the house of bondage. This verse is telling you that Egypt is the house of bondage, all right? So when you go to Deuteronomy 28, 68, when it says Egypt, you gotta put the house of bondage because you didn't, we didn't physically go into Egypt again in ships. Oh, okay. So we're saying we shall go into the house of bondage again, which is Egypt, which means bondage. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. With ships. Who did that happen to? Um, Ernest? Uh, the Israelites, right? Yeah. So that's how you know that we are the Israelites. Because nobody else can say that they went into slavery with ships. And that's in the Bible. We're reading the Bible. Alright? By the way whereof I spake unto thee. By the way whereof I spake unto thee. By the way Moses, by the way God told us we're going to go into slavery again with ships. By the way Moses told us by the way he explained to us, with ships, with ships. You see that? That's our history. Our history is in the Bible. Read it again. And the, Lord, and the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with the ships. The Lord shall bring thee into the house of bondage. All right, Egypt. That was the first, that was the physical Egypt, right? Now we're talking about spiritual Egypt. All right, well, you know the what? house of bondage. Read. By the way I speak, by the way whereof I spake unto thee. By the way whereof I spake unto thee with ships. Now let's get on um, Revelations 11 verse 8. So that you understand that America is spiritual Egypt. America is the house of bondage. It's recorded in the history that we've served in, in, um, in, in shadow slavery, meaning chains and shackles, right? We were in chains and shackles in America for 400 years, right? over 400 years. That's recorded. Yeah. Yeah. So let's read. The book of Revelations, chapter 11, verse 8. <laughs> and their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city. Their dead bodies. Why are we dead? Because we don't know who we are. All right, like I read earlier in Proverbs 21, 16. The man that wandereth out of the way of understanding, way out of this Bible, shall remain in the congregation of the dead. Meaning, the water, like you the see our people here, they are not physically dead, they're spiritually dead. Why? Because they don't know who they are. Just like you stopped and I asked you, what is your nationality? You said, I don't know. And that's, that's, an, that's an honest answer. Most of our people don't know. We didn't know, all right? We had to get the understanding from the Bible, all right? Now read. Which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt. That great city is America, which is spiritually called what? Sodom and Egypt. Sodom and Egypt. Why is it called Sodom? Because here in America, there's laws passed that a man can marry a man. Homosexual, homosexuality is accepted in America. That's why spiritually it is called Sodom. Read. Well, also our Lord. Oh, spiritually called Sodom and oh, what? Sorry. Spiritually it's called Sodom and Egypt. And Egypt. Why? Because here in America, we serve Bondage. This is the so other house Egypt. of bondage, which is Egypt, spiritual so in Egypt. Another sense, instead of Sodom and Egypt, like Sodom and Gomorrah as well. But the flip side of it, more or less. No, so just telling you, this. yeah, we still in slavery. Why? Because you don't have the power, you don't have your own government, you don't have your own language, you don't have your own culture. All right? We are still in slavery. Do you not understand that when you pay taxes, 
That is a form of slavery. The king doesn't pay taxes, right? Why? Because he's the king. He's in power. He's in rulership. Only the servants pay taxes. Give me that. The book of Baruch, chapter 3 and verse 8. Behold, we are yet this day in our captivity. The prophet Baruch said, behold, meaning watch, look. We are yet this day. We are still to this day in our captivity, meaning serving slavery, serving bondage. We are still in the house of bondage. We are still in Egypt, the house of bondage. America is spiritual Egypt. Where thou hast scattered us for a reproach and a curse. Where the Most High scattered us for a reproach and a curse, meaning this is a curse, all right? For a reproach and a curse. Here in America, we're serving the curses, all right? Deuteronomy 28 and 68, this is where we're serving the curses in America. Read. And to be subject to payments. And to be subject to payments, okay? Here, we are yet this day in our captivity as a reproach and a curse and to be subject to payment. Meaning, if you don't pay the taxes, what happens? Turn the Revenue Service. A perfect example of that is our sister um, Lauren Hill and our brother Wesley Snipes. They thought that they were above the law of the land. They thought that they were free. They thought that they didn't have to pay taxes for whatever reason. And what happened? They got locked up. Why? Because they didn't pay their taxes. They were subject to payment. They fall the curses because they're the children of Israel as well. Right. All right? Exactly. They didn't give us the season. Read. The book of Matthew, chapter 17, and verse 24. And when they were come to Capernaum, they that received tribute money came to Peter. They that received tribute money, meaning the tax collectors, right? And said, Doth not your master pay tribute? They said, does not your master pay tribute? Meaning, doesn't your master pay taxes? Read. He saith yes. And when he was coming to the house, Jesus prevented him, saying, What thinkest thou, Simon? He, Jesus prevented um, Peter. Simon is Peter. All right? He didn't prevent him from paying taxes. Listen. Of whom do the kings of the earth take custom or tribute? He asked Peter, Of whom do the kings pay customs or tribute? Meaning, who do they pay taxes to? What did Peter answer? Of their children or of strangers? Of their children or of strangers? Peter saith unto him, of strangers. Of strangers. All right, read that again from the top. He saith, yes. And when he was coming to the house, Jesus prevented him, saying, What thinkest thou, Simon? Of whom do the kings of the earth take custom or tribute? So the king, he's asking him, who do the kings of the earth take, pay to, um, collect the taxes from? Of their own children or of strangers? Of their own children, meaning of their own people right. or of strangers, meaning other nations. Okay. Peter saith unto him, of strangers. Of strangers, meaning they collect the taxes from the other, from the other nations. So here in America, the, 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 the king or the, the government, the American government, they collect the taxes from us. Why? Because we are in captivity. We are subject to payment. The king doesn't collect his taxes from his people, he collects it from the servants, in other words. Je Jesus saith unto him, then are the children free. Then are the children free, all right? Because when you don't have to pay taxes, when I don't have to pay taxes, we are free. But when we have to pay taxes, guess what? We are slaves, all right? We are slaves to the American system, the American government, all right? This is where we serve in our captivity. Behold! We are yet this day in our captivity for a reproach and a curse and to be subject to payment. You understand that, Ernest? Excellent, Ernest. Now we're going to bring out a law, all right? Because Moses told us if we, if we forsake the laws, if we break the laws, all right, curses are going to fall upon us. But here in the last days, the Israelites, all the so-called blacks and Hispanics, are rising up. All right, and us as the prophets of the Most High, we have to teach our people who they are and what they have to do in order to get salvation, all right? In order to be saved, in order to be free, we have to teach you, all right? And what do you do in return? You have to teach others also, all right? So when you go home and you study that fly and you find out the truth, 
you have to pass that knowledge on, brother. All right? The book of Leviticus, chapter 21, and verse 5. They shall not make baldness upon their head. Moses told us, right? They shall not make baldness upon their head. Meaning, you're not supposed to shave your head bald. That's one law you're keeping, all right? But I don't, I don't know if you occasionally shave your head. Do you occasionally shave your head? That's very good because that's a law that you're not supposed to read. Neither shall they shave off the corner of their beard. Neither shall they shave off the corner of their beard. Where's the corner of your beard? The corners of your beard is this, your face. Why are you not supposed to shave that off? Oh, hold on. Is that it on that? Uh, no. Nor make any cuttings in their flesh. No make any cuttings in their flesh, meaning tattoos. Okay. Now you ask why you're not supposed to shave your face. That's an excellent question. Leviticus 18, verse 1. The book of Leviticus, chapter 18, and verse 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel. The Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel. We're speaking to the children of Israel. Lord is of the children of Israel. You, earnest, are of the children of Israel. We're speaking to you because God commanded us, just like he commanded Moses. Read. And say unto them, I am the Lord your God. And say unto them that God is the God of Israel, no one else. All right? After the doings of the land of Egypt, wherein ye dwelt, shall ye not do. You see that? Read that again. Because... After let me under, so you understand. When Moses um, was giving these laws to the Israelites, we had just came out of Egypt. So we had a lot of the customs, the traditions, the styles of Egypt. When all right? Behind you. Exactly. We shaved our face. We had our head bald. We had um, short skirts because that's the cast. That was the custom of Egypt. So Moses was giving us the laws. Most High was making us holy through His laws. He was getting us. He was uh, taking us out of the customs of Egypt. After the doings of the land of Egypt, wherein ye dwelt, shall ye not do. After the doings in the land of Egypt, where ye dwelt, right? We dwelt in physical Egypt, shall ye not do. That's why he told us, don't shave your face. Because the Egyptians shaved their face. You understand? And now here in America, what do they do? They teach you that you have to shave your face. In order to get that good job, you have to shave your face. In order to get that good woman, you have to shave your face. The pastors even shave their face in these churches. But the Bible is telling us that you're not supposed to. All right? That's a law from the Most High. Uh, give me your own. Give me but some of them. Okay, but like some, some of the laws, like this, in the Old Testament, right? Yeah. And, and the birth of Jesus, when he died in the cross, some of the laws, the old laws, don't stand in for the New Testament. No. Oh, so that's it? So you're telling me that now you can shave your face? No, I'm saying, I mean, why what are you it, telling me? Why is it such a thing? I know you read it, but so in other words, so you won't make it into the kingdom of God if you shave your face? Yeah, because you're breaking the God's law. All right, you have to keep God's law. That's how you keep yourself holy. That's how you separate yourselves from the other nations. We are a holy people unto the Most High God. So in order to be holy, you have to be keeping the laws that He gave us. Give me um, Matthew 5, verse 17. Because you have the misunderstanding that God, Christ died for us on the cross, and, and that's why we don't have to keep some of the laws. We're going to show you that we have to keep all the laws. The book of Matthew, chapter 5, verse 17. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. This is, this is Christ, the black Messiah, speaking to the, to the Israelites out of the Holy Bible, all right? This is in the Bible. This is Christ's word. Pay attention, Ernest. Read it again. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. What did Christ say? I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. But to fulfill, meaning to complete the laws, to do the laws. So Christ was keeping the law. Christ had a beard. Christ had hair on his head. Christ had fringes. Why? Because those were laws that were given to us. So he didn't come to destroy none of those laws, Ernest. So from this day forward, Ernest, you have to keep your beard. You're an Israelite. That's right. You have to keep yourself holy to the Most High. Give me the weight of sin. That's what you were going no. Let me show you why you have to keep these laws. Why it's so serious. All right? 
The book of Romans, chapter 6, verse 23. For the wages of sin is death. The wages. What is a wage? If you, you do. Huh? What is a wage? Make it plain for me. If, if, you, if you do a job for me and I give you a wage, what am I giving you? giving you payment. So the payment, the wages of sin is what? The wages of sin is death. The wages of breaking God's law. The wage for shaving your face, which is a law, is what? Is, is what? death. Is death. So that's why you're not, not supposed to shave your face. Because you have to be fearful of the most high's judgment. You understand that? You have to be scared that if you shave your face after this day, because before, now, before this day, you were ignorant of the law. But now you know the law. So now you're guilty. So I'm accountable for Now you're accountable. All right? It's no joke, brother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right? Yeah. I was in on that? But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. See that? The gift of God, which is the law. The law is prevent us from death. All right? Which is eternal life. Because when we keep these doors, that's how we get the kingdom. Attention, attention. America is on the brink of destruction. America, according to the Holy Bible, is called Babylon the Great. America has spent billions of dollars to keep something secret from you. But I'm here to let you know, to all you black men and Latino men, you're not blacks and you're not Latinos. You make up the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel, conquered and destroyed between 1492 and 1620, according to Deuteronomy chapter 28, according to the King James Holy Bible 1611. Conquered, destroyed, renamed, reclassified. According to 2nd Ezra chapter 13, verse 40 to 45, you are the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Those are your forefathers. Those are your ancestors. Wake up. Christianity has conquered and destroyed our people, brainwashed us, set up and based upon lies. The deliverer is Jesus the Christ, the black Messiah. Revelation chapter 1, verse 14.